Okay, um, hello my friend, hopefully that you are doing great. So this is the very first lesson, the first, uh, the lesson number one in um, our tutorial related to how to automate your mobile application uh, with Java, Appium, TechNG, and Maven. So this lesson, I want to focus on uh, sharing about the uh, mobile automation test with Appium, but in a general architect, because uh, you know, it's very important that you can understand the whole architect, uh, how your script interact with uh, components in the framework and so on. So when you understand the concept about the architect, this will help you to understand how to set up. So basically when you install something, you need to understand why. Why do you need to install that library or those stuff, something like that. And the second thing that it will help you to debug if your script is not running uh, good or something like that. It fails some sometime or uh, related to the infrastructure, uh, something up and down. So when you understand about the architect, you can debug it easier. So it's very important. Okay. So just try to focus in the very first lesson. So now let me try to maximum it first. So here, let me try to explain for you uh, in detail uh, about the general architect. So for example, when we write some code here, right, on our machine, and then when we run it, and our target that we need to control the, the application on the text here on the device for Android and for iOS, right? So. The APM works based on the client and server architect. So that's been our cost will be have the role as client and we will have APM server. So the, the client and server will interact via REST API request, but that REST API request will uh, have the, you know, Mobile JSON file protocol. They will use mobile JSON file protocol via REST API request. Okay, so this is the Appium server. So that means our code here. We need to use Appium client libraries. So uh, it depends on uh, which language that you are using in automation test. So we have a Node.js, uh, we have Java, we have Python, and we need to download the uh, support Appium client library. His, uh, they implement the mobile JSON write protocol here, and then they can communicate here. So this is the first path. Okay, this is client. This is the server. Okay, and they communicate via mobile JSON write protocol. So what happened after this? For example, we try to send something to the Appium server here, and then if everything correct, every information from capability is correct. Appium server now, for example, let we talk about the how interact with the, the Android device first, okay? So here, when we send us, we want to run the test with Appium, uh, with Android platform, and we want to use something like UI Automator 2 driver, or we want to use something else like Espresso driver. So in this case, Appium will detect what we want, and then it will try to connect to Appium bootstrap.jar file, which will be installed on your device at the first time running Appium here, if you install something here. So the Appium server view uh, communicates with Appium Bootstrap Java uh, under a box. So basically, when we run, if you you look at the console, you will see it will connect to some Bootstrap box here, and they will communicate. So now, Appium Bootstrap here as a client of this one is not it's not a client, but they will communicate with the uh, Appium here, and it will work as a interpreter and it will use UI Automator 2 framework or Espresso framework. So you can see here, Appium use the UI Automator 2 driver and this one use the 
UI Automator 2 uh, framework or a Bradshaw framework here to do what? To, to try now translate the request from here to something understandable under this framework and then you try to control the target application. So this is the whole picture, right? We send something to the server. If everything is correct, the IBM server will get the correct driver. That's correct driver will launch and then communicate with IBM Bootstrap. IBM Bootstrap now using the correct framework and then try to translate the request here to something that's understandable to control the application. After it get the response, after the command here is get the response, it will respond best to the IBM server. IBM server now will respond for our client here in the port, and then we can see the result here. Okay, so this is the first path for Android. So for uh, uh, iOS, it's the slightly different. So now you can see for iOS, we will use it's a uh, SC UI tag driver here. It's not like this, right? This will give you another driver. And we have another thing here. You can see web driver agent. So sometimes they just write something like WDA here. So it is web driver agent. And this one is developed by uh, Facebook, as I remember correctly, if I re remember correctly. And this web driver agent will be on your device, our device, just like on Bootstrap on the Android here. But you will have it on the iOS device. You will see at the first time it launch. And this web driver agent will use the SCUI test framework to communicate with the target application under the test here. So the things happen here is very similar. So client sends something to the server. If everything is correct on the capabilities, it will give the correct driver. In this case, it will be SCUI test driver, and then that one will communicate with web driver agent via a box here. Okay, and then after the web driver agent try to interact with the target uh, application and it gets some response, it will respond back to the server. And then server will respond back to our client. In this case, is the running code here. So this is the general architect. So here, when you install FBM server here, that means all of the uh, appropriate drivers will be shipped with FBM driver here, uh, FBM server here. If you all try to open the location where FBM is installed, you will see this driver in that location. So when we send something, uh, it depends on the platform that we want to test. It depends on the framework that we want to test. The Appium server will select the correct driver and then do the correct behaviors to interact with the target device. So we will communicate with the Appium server here via a port with the 4 box e, uh, and the bootstrap box is something like, you know, you can control it or you can have the dynamic here setting up with Appium driver. We have another box here, another box here, right? So at the time you want to run something like in parallel or something like that, we will talk more about how to have more Appium server here and we can use the Selenium grid as well. And in that lesson, I will tell in more detail how to construct something like that. So. Basically, at the end, you can see we can have the Appium server here on the same machine, right? We have the client code here. We can install the Appium server here, and then we can plug the device that we want to attach here. So in the context that we just have only one machine here, we can install all of these things in just only one machine here. But in the context that we want to distribute the test, so we will have the code will be running in a separate environment. It will send to another machine, another node here with many Appium server installed um, on the machines. And then we will have uh, many device connected to different machines. Okay, so we will talk more in detail about that context. Okay, so 
in this lesson, you understand the architect, and then in the next lesson, I will tell you how to prepare the environment. And at that time, you, you will understand why do we need to install something. This will be easier, okay? So bye for now and see you in the next lesson. We will try to, you know, prepare the environment and everything uh, to have the first script branding, okay? Bye for now.